Hi everyone, I'm Tammy and I'm teaching you how to paint in plein air. So I was sitting at the playground and I thought it would be fun to sketch and paint out one of the houses across the street from the playground. And I started with my house. Now, if we're talking about perspective, it can be challenging to get all the angles correct. And it still is a challenge for me, but I thought I would give it a tackle because normally I paint landscapes, but mostly flowers. So let's do a little challenge. Painting outside can be rough. And one reason is the weather. We were sitting under a canopy, but you'll see this later in the footage that often we started to see little snowflake looking shapes, meaning little raindrops, little sprays, a little bit of mist was falling on the paint and pushing that paint away. So that's one of the challenges, but you can bring a good umbrella. Um, don't go when it's raining. You know, those are ways to help yourself out. So I'm mixing up some green here with some brown. Wanted to add in some of that uh, grass and I'm leaving some white space on purpose because I wanna go in and add in other colors as well. So if you wanna paint in plain air or outside, I want you to check out the link above here and it's going to be a lovely little paint on the go kit. I encourage you guys to check it out and it's the supplies that I use. Keep it in your car, keep it at your desk, if you have an office, and then you have all the things you need in a very small space to be able to paint outside or even at your desk if you want to paint in your car. It's just a whole new ball game, mixing up some grays here. So for the face of the house, I'm gonna have a lighter gray color. And then on that left side, we're gonna go a lot darker, just emulating that that part of the house is in shadow. So I did a whole basic wash. This is called your basic wash, your underpainting. You're adding in those lighter colors because with watercolor, we're painting from light to dark. We'll start adding in our darker colors later and you'll see later on in the video, this is not the first time I'm adding in these grays. I go for it several times. I think you can see here as well that the little bit of raindrop action has happened already and that's okay. We're just going through it. I was just hoping it wouldn't start to pour and I think, I think it worked out pretty good. So adding in my tree trunks over here, I'm using a number six round brush, by the way, this is from Etcher. Sorry about my finger on the left side. Clearly I couldn't see that. <laughs> I'm holding the camera, by the way, if you couldn't tell by the shakiness in my left hand. And sometimes I had to cut some shots out because, well, uh, I was not pointing the camera in the right direction. Adding in some more on the ground and the path here. A little bit more darker colors, adding in some texture. Now we're doing our mid-tone for the trees, that medium green. And then we'll take some water and we'll spread it out. So we have the light green, the medium green, and we'll add in some darker green later as this dries for the shadowed parts. Okay, so the drawing part, that was another challenge as I'm adding in my second layer of gray, just darkening it up. Remember that watercolor dries about one shade lighter. And so if you put in, oh my goodness, look at all the raindrops there. If you put in your color and you think it looks perfect, you need to go one shade darker because it's going to lighten up. All right. So yeah, challenges in painting and plain air. Um, sometimes it's really cold or it's really hot. If it's really hot and the sun is shining down, your paper is going to dry super fast, which can be great. But if you're working wet on wet, we're adding wet paint to wet paint, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to dry up way too fast. Of course, the challenge that I had here because it was cooler is that the paper was staying wet way too long. And so it was hard to add my layers because you don't want to add a second layer when your first layer is wet or you're not going to get that dark um, color, the defined lines that you're looking for. All right, so over here, I can already see there's an issue and we will fix that later. The garage is looking kind of wonky, but I promise you guys, we will fix it. So we're adding our darker shadowed sides just a little bit underneath the little areas where the big um, bunches of leaves are in these branches. And then just, yeah, just blending it out with a clean, damp brush. Or you can leave it if you like the harsh lines. I'm looking more uh, for a softer edge adding some darker parts on that left side of the tree trunk just to give it more definition. Of course, you need to add your shadows as well. So if you are working quickly, you might have a challenge if it's cold, you might have a challenge if it's hot. And these are things just to kind of keep in mind 
as I'm adding in my details. So I decided to outline this garage area because it's just really receded and kind of blending into everything else. And I want it to stand out. It is a, well, everything is a three-dimensional shape, but this one is definitely sticking out more than the house. And I wanted to reflect that here. So, you know, it looks like I'm drawing. You could take a black pen if you wanted. I just wanted a subtle dark gray color. And then, you know, if you wanted to blend in those lines a little bit more, you could. I just decided to darken up um, the garage door front. And right here where we have that light reddish brown, it's clearly I, I put it over too far. And, you know, this is just me working in real time. Of course, I've cut out some pieces um, where I was shooting the floor, etc. But this is a real time painting. I'm working it out. My brain is going and see, I added some gray on the side so that we can shorten up where this reddish brown garage door actually is to be able to change the perspective and make it look more balanced. And then adding some more texture in just a little bit in the path there. And of course, adding that brown in the grass too. So we've got greens, light green, medium green, some browns, reddish brown. And then I wanted to just do a little bit of greenery here on the side of the house. Later, I'm gonna go back in and darken up some of the gray on the side of the house as well, just to make it stand out more. Cause right now, all the gray is just looking it's looking flat, it's looking the same. And then I will add in a little more greenery in between the trees, just stippling here with my pointed number six round brush. And now for that final side, I'm painting it very dark and you'll notice as this all gets filled in, it's gonna give that dimension and that shadowed side making this house look a lot more um, 3D. That's the word I'm using today. So painting in plein air is really fun. It's a challenge for your brain. It's a challenge for the paper, for the environment, all the things that you're dealing with, especially if you're filming and you're only painting with one hand, it gets a little bit choppy sometimes. Guys, I also teach watercolor on Patreon. If you wanna check that out, the link is in the description of this video. I offer bonus content, not seen anywhere else, tutorials, live stream access, art prints, mental health, art workshops, all the things. Happy painting, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,